We will tell this story the best way we can. Don't kill us, just trying to put on. If we get things wrong, please get in the comments. The crew we going to talk about today are members and associates of the Outlaw Gangsta Crips, OGC. OGC is a gang comprised primarily of individuals residing in and around the East Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York. OGC is a set or subgroup of the Crip Street Gang. OGC includes an offshoot known as Shooter Gang, SG, which includes members and associates of OGC, as well as members and associates of other gangs, including the 8 Trey Gangsta Crips, 8 Trey, Bosses in Business, Bib, and the Bloods. Shooter Gang is the crew which Brooklyn rappers, Chef G and Sleepy Hollow rep. Members and associates of OGC have engaged in drug trafficking, fraud, firearms trafficking, promoting prostitution and acts of violence, including murder, attempted murder, robbery and assault, as well as other crimes. Significantly, OGC is a true interstate enterprise. Members and associates routinely travel to Connecticut, West Virginia and other states to sell narcotics purchased in New York, and, indeed, several members and associates have been arrested for crimes outside New York. Let's take it back a little bit. Infamous Blue, aka Inf, started original gangster Crip in Rikers Island. He's one of the first Crips to run things in the jail, and was alleged to have cut many rival Blood Gang members during his time there. People who were up north with him would know him as Razor Tag, hence all the cutting he was doing. At some point of his bid, he met Omar, aka O. In 1995, O put the set into the hands of another man named Fish Loke. While Fish Loke was running the set, he branched the name to Outlaw Gangster Crip. O got departed when his bid was done, and by 2001, Fish would get killed by the Bloods. Another Crip, Rick, then becomes the leader. Nels is a leader of both Shooter Gang and OGC. He had stayed in North Carolina from 1990 to 1996 with his moms and great-grandmoms, before moving to Brooklyn to stay with his grandmoms. He had never met his pops, and his moms passed away from a sickness in 98. By this time, he was in the streets already. He was the little homie from 1999, but would become a gangster and reach big homie status by 2003. On August 5, 2008, he was charged with felony assault after he shot a man on Parkside Avenue in Brooklyn. He was sentenced to two years as imprisonment, 18 months post-release supervision, and a 10-year order of protection. While locked up, he would get cut in his ear chest and chin by another inmate. On October 25, 2013, Nels was charged with felony possession of a weapon, based on his possession of a loaded 38 caliber revolver while sitting in a taxi. He was convicted and sentenced to five years as imprisonment and five years as post-release supervision. Before this though, he was arrested on February 3, 2012, and charged with possessing a controlled substance with intent to deliver it. Notably, this arrest occurred in Martinsburg, West Virginia, where the defendant and other OGC members and associates have sold crack cocaine. Law enforcement raided the house where Nels and two others were located, along with drugs and drug paraphernalia. The case was closed on January 2, 2015. Indy Miller used to be OGC, but turned blood in jail in the later 2000s. He still held it down with the Crips though. He was born in 1988 in Brooklyn. His pops moved to England when he was five, and his mom's moved to Jamaica when he was 14, she owned or owns a bar out there. He didn't want to stay out in Jamaica, so he bounced around his grandmom's crib and other spots in BK for a while. Although his pops wasn't around, he still tried to send bread when he could. Not too long after his mom's left to Jamaica, he would slowly fall deeper into the streets. In 2005, Indy was arrested in Brooklyn and charged with criminal sale of a controlled substance after he sold cocaine base to an undercover police officer. He was sentenced to six months to four years as imprisonment. In December 2005, after pleading guilty, he failed to appear and a bench warrant was issued. On July 8, 2013, his parole was revoked. In 2008, he was arrested for damaging property and related offenses in Connecticut after he hit two cars, fled the scene, and was then caught speeding while intoxicated. Notably, the defendant used on alias. He was sentenced to 30 days imprisonment. In 2010, he was arrested in Connecticut for selling cocaine base. He was sentenced to 731 days imprisonment. By 2012, Nels, Indy Miller, Pat the Hat from Martins Road, and a few eight trays from 305 Linden, were all getting money. 
Besides the love of money, there was another commonality between most of these guys, especially the ones in the inner circle. They realized that everybody were official shooters. Allegedly, between Nels and Indy, they decided they are going to be called Shoot a Gang. The leaders were Nels, Indy Miller, Ketchup, and Pat the Hat. Ketchup was also born in 88 in Brooklyn. He was raised in a low-income intact home till he was about eight. His pops got deported to Panama and he just stayed with his moms, basically up until he was arrested in this case. In 2006, Ketchup was adjudicated as a youthful offender for robbery in the third degree in Kings County Supreme Court in Brooklyn, New York, and sentenced to five years probation. In 2013, Ketchup was sentenced to a one-year conditional discharge and six-month license suspension for a 2007 charge of criminal possession of a controlled substance in the seventh degree in Kings County Supreme Court. In 2010, Ketchup was sentenced to no further penalty for false identification to a law enforcement officer in municipal court in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He has, however, been shot on three different occasions. In 2011, he was hit by a stray bullet in the right calf. When he was treated for his wounds at Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn, New York, the doctors were unable to remove fully the bullet. Nevertheless, Ketchup has suffered no residual effects from this incident. In 2013, Ketchup was shot in the lower portion of his right leg. He was taken for treatment at Kings County Hospital and has suffered no residual effects from this incident. In 2014, Ketchup was shot in his neck and left hand and a bullet grazed his back. Ketchup was taken to Kings County Hospital for treatment, where he was hospitalized for three weeks. He underwent two surgeries because of his neck injuries. Allegedly, they were beefing with bloods and also some crips from Martins. That beef got crazy around 2013, and then there was the summer war with eight deuce trays, GSC from Ocean Avenue. Shoot a gang and GSC would war all summer 2014 in a bloody war. Three outlaws were shot, one died, and three GSC were shot and one died, which was a leader. The war died down in 2015. There is some question about Chef G's influence to shoot a gang. Allegedly, his pop was from Linden and was also CMB and shooter gang back in his day. That's allegedly though, anyway, this is basically the birth of shoot a gang, gang 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 gang. That was just a grand scope of some of the players. We are going to get a little more specific now. On October 9th and 10, 2013, Spaz, fellow member, Pop and two members of Bib, conspired to break into and rob at gunpoint, a check cashing store at 1446 Nostrand Avenue. In furtherance of the conspiracy, Spaz and his co-conspirators entered a vacant apartment above the check cashing business and began to cut a hole in the floor. Their plan was to enter the store during the day and to force an employee at gunpoint to open the safe. The plan was thwarted because an employee noticed damage to the ceiling. On October 12, 2013, Nell shot John Doe No. 2 and John Doe No. 3 in front of 1404 Nostrand Avenue. These shootings were part of an ongoing dispute with rivals of OGC, which included a series of shootings involving Nels and others. The charged shootings occurred in the presence of several members and associates of OGC, including Ketchup. The victims were hospitalized with gunshot wounds, but ultimately survived. The evidence of these crimes includes cooperating witness testimony, eyewitness testimony, law enforcement testimony, ballistics evidence and hospital records. On January 29, 2014, Pop, who had participated in an October 2013 robbery conspiracy and other crimes with members of OGC, including the check cashing attempted robbery with Spaz, was murdered. Members of OGC believed that Mitchell was shot by a member of a gang known as Bosses in Business, Bib, who had also participated in the October 2013 check cash conspiracy. OGC members further believed that John Doe No. 5 and John Doe No. 6, who were also members of Bib and who were close criminal associates of the suspected shooter of Mitchell, were also responsible for Mitchell's murder. On January 30, 2014, the day after the murder of Pop, Nels exchanged Facebook messages with another OGC member, in which he wrote about Mitchell's death. Ninja shot the cuz in the back, affirmed that he knew who did it, and vowed to retaliate, stating, all I need is the V to pass through Ninja's blocks. Crazy thing is, some people say Pop was playing both sides. He was basically plotted on by some of the same dudes he chilled around. We will get back to John Doe 5 and 6 shortly. On June 3, 2014, Nels, Indy, Lil Banger, Jeffrey and B3 participated in an attempt robbery that would ultimately end in the shooting of John Doe No. 1. 
It took place inside of the Big Boy Deli at 1452 Nostrand Avenue, during which B3 was attempting to steal the John Doe No. 1's chain. This all take place between about 4.20 and 4.30 in the morning. So, John Doe No. 1 joins his friend at the deli counter. The two then step back and stand near some packaged food. Shoot a gang members, Joseph and B3 are near them. Indy Miller enters the deli, and he addresses the victims and walks away. Two minutes later, Indy and other Shooter gang members return and confront the victims, Indy going off the most on John Doe No. 1. B3 pushes John Doe No. 1. Moments later, Indy attempts to retrieve a gun from Nels. Now B3 pushes the friend with John Doe No. 1. Indy grabs John Doe No. 1 by the shirt and swings him around, at which point Lil Banger punches John Doe No. 1. The two victims then retreat, clearly in fear. B3 swings at the friend, as Indy and others approach John Doe No. 1. The gang surrounded the victims, and then close in on them. Indy claps his hands to get Nell's attention. He gets the gun from Nell's, which he then brandishes at John Doe No. 1. Indy then shoots at John Doe No. 1, causing him to fall and shattering the glass in the back of the deli. The group disperses. Indy backs out of the store and calmly fires a second shot at John Doe No. 1. As a result of being shot by Indy, John Doe No. 1 was hit in the chest, stomach and rear. He left the store by crawling out of the back exit and retreated to a McDonald's. He was taken by ambulance to a hospital, where he stayed for one and a half months, and he survived. On or about July 19, 2014, Looney and others assaulted and then stabbed John Doe No. 4 in the torso, throat and neck. It happened in front of 116 Lennox Road. Looney did this because John Doe No. 4 had defended a woman whom Looney had ordered to stop playing a song by rival gang member at the time, Bobby Shmurda. Bobby Shmurda became popularly known as a rapper in 2014, particularly for his song Hot Ninja, which was released that summer, and for the Shmoney dance, which appeared in the music video. The evidence of Looney's crime includes eyewitness testimony, hospital records, a recorded telephone call and Facebook records. In the recorded telephone call, placed two days after the incident, Looney admitted that he yoked a couple ninjas up, meaning that he assaulted two individuals, because ninjas was wilding in front the building with that shmoney stuff, and he added that after he had turned the music off, John Doe No. 4 turns it back on and starts dancing and wilding, and said some smart stuff out his mouth, so I just started yoking him. Looney pretty much got his name because he was just that, Looney. He had been shot once, and on another occasion he was hit in the head with a bottle and gun butted. He was in a coma for a while after that. He was born in 94 in Brooklyn like his fellow gang members. His pops went to the feds and his moms had two jobs. He had trouble focusing in school and was diagnosed with ADHD. He would catch a gun charge earlier on, and would commit the stabbing we just spoke about while on supervised release. We will get back to him later. On May 12, 2015, Spaz, Boots, Styles, Ketchup and Dre conspired to murder John Doe No. 5 and John Doe No. 6. The conspiracies were put to a halt only because law enforcement intercepted telephone calls among the defendants and arrested them before they could carry out the murders. As we stated, Pop was murdered a year earlier and the gang were still plotting their get back. On May 12, 2015, Spaz called Ketchup and reported that John Doe No. 5 and John Doe No. 6 were in East Flatbush, and Spaz further told Ketchup to share the information with Boots. That call was intercepted pursuant to a judicially authorized wiretap. Later that day, after a series of intercepted phone calls among Ketchup, Boots and Styles about the location of John Doe No. 5 and John Doe No. 6, and in which the callers confirmed that they had guns, law enforcement observed Boots, Styles and Dre in a car parked on the block where they expected to find the victims. After Boots, Styles and Dre stepped out of the car and stood around the corner from that location, Boots and Styles were arrested, along with Ketchup, who was with them, Spaz was arrested one block away in his home. Dre was briefly detained, but he was not taken into custody at the time. The next day, March 13, 2015, the car that Boots, Styles, and Holman had been in was searched and found to contain three firearms and a quantity of crack cocaine. The firearms were located near where each of Boots, Styles, and Holman had been sitting. Dre subsequently fled the New York City area, but he was arrested in the Bronx on May 24, 2015. Let's get back to Looney. On October 2019, at approximately 4.30 p.m., Looney was driving a Toyota Camry in the Flatbush neighborhood of Brooklyn. 
Looney had a traffic incident with a work van driven by two victims, wherein the driver of one vehicle impeded the entrance of the other vehicle into the lane. The drivers both came to a stop thereafter, stepped out of their vehicles, and argued. Looney told the two victims, in sum and substance, that he was going to cause one or both of them serious physical harm. After a woman with Looney ushered him back into his car, both drivers returned to their vehicles and drove off. Shortly thereafter, Looney stopped the car, and the woman and a child exited the vehicle. Looney began to follow the two victims in his car, even after the work van made a U-turn. Looney then pulled his car alongside the driver's side of the van, pointed a gun at the head of the driver of the van, and fired one shot. The bullet entered the side of the van and struck a metal plate behind the victim's shoulder before ricocheting and coming to rest inside the van cabinet. Looney then drove away. The victims pursued Looney, who parked and entered an apartment complex. Looney was subsequently arrested by law enforcement officers, who recovered a silver and black loaded Taurus from a trash room in the apartment complex. A ballistics analysis matched this firearm to the bullet recovered from inside the van, and matched the caliber of the spent shell casing found on the floor of Looney's vehicle. That was that for Looney. As we stated, most of the crew were charged with conspiring to distribute and possess with intent to distribute 280 grams or more of cocaine base, which carries a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence. They are also charged with various substantive counts of possession with intent to distribute. The proof these crimes includes eyewitness testimony, agent testimony, physical evidence, consensually recorded telephone calls, audio and video recordings of certain transactions, wiretap recordings, recorded jail calls, arrest evidence collected by police officers, and Facebook records. They also are charged with defrauding Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Citibank and TT Bank. This bank fraud was extensive, widespread and brazen. It consisted of numerous transactions in New York and elsewhere, and, conservatively, caused losses in excess of $500,000. In general, each instance of fraud began with a member or associate of OGC, including members of 8 Trey who were closely affiliated with OGC obtaining a paycheck, and then using the information on that check to create fake checks that appeared to be written by businesses. The fake checks were deposited into various people's bank accounts, and money was then quickly withdrawn from those accounts, before the checks could be determined to be fraudulent. This crime requires the use of numerous people's identifying information, including access to their ATM cards. The proof of these crimes includes copies of fraudulent checks, records of deposits into, and withdrawals from, accounts at the victim banks, records of phone calls from the defendant's phones to the banks, photographs of defendants at ATMs, Facebook messages discussing, and carrying out, the fraud, and photographs of fake checks and banking information that they circulated to each other. But this about wraps it up for this one. Most of these guys are doing upwards of 121 months, some doing almost double the time. There is more that we didn't mention, and we may spin back in the future. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.